it's time to copy our production database, download it, and then run it in dev. Hey, what's up? It's Mark at Alchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix and other backend stuff like Postgres, which we're going to do today. So this is a common problem. Say I've got a local app. I've got an app that I, I run on a server somewhere, alchemist.camp, which if you know this channel, you've seen many, many tutorials that are all hosted on it. And locally, I have none. So how can we fix this? Well, we're going to go through a fairly simple process. First, I'm going to drop the database. And I'm going to use a tool called Ecto for that. But basically, this is just dropping the database that's associated with the app. Now we're going to SSH into production and get a dump of that database. We'll uh, just SSH from right here. And I have an SSH uh, profile called campsite set up that will just log me in using SSH keys with the appropriate, uh, the appropriate credentials. We'll assume the Postgres user. To do that, we can just do sudo i interactive u and then Postgres. We'll use a tool called pg dump that's got an underscore in it, and we'll pass it several flags. First is capital F lowercase c. This is format custom. This custom format is compressed, it's really flexible. There are a lot of ways um, at the time of a extraction that we can. Uh, extract it to either you know get information related to roles or not and, and it's generally the way I like to go then uh, dash V for verbose and a dash F lowercase f for the file and we'll just put everything in campsite dot dump uh, it's good to put the dot dump extension just so it's clear we got this out of PG dump as opposed to uh, from you know copy from the database or you know a, a backslash O straight from PSQL and then finally we've got to give it the user uh, this will just be Postgres uh, it's not the user the database runs under in production but the Postgres user has permission to do what it pleases and the name of the database in my case is campsite underscore prod so we do that and we'll have a dump that's placed into the directory where Postgres is. That's very important because we're going to SCP it down in a second. So we'll exit this, uh, this session as Postgres, then we'll exit our SSH session, and now the next step is to SCP it down. So do SCP, which is secure copy, and again, since I have an SSH profile for campsite, I can just do this as the address. And we're going to use this directory that we already saw a moment ago. So it's going to be var lib slash postgres ql slash campsite dot dump. So what it was named. And I'm just going to put it in the directory one level up from where I am here. And it'll take just a moment to copy it down since it's not that big of a database. Now that that download is complete, the next step is to restore it. I'm going to make a couple of false moves here. So watch very carefully and see if you can catch them before I point them out. So let's clear the screen again. And I'm going to pull up my credentials and information for the database that uh, I have set up in my framework for running in dev. Now this is Phoenix framework, but it doesn't really matter if you're using Phoenix or Rails or Laravel, whatever. They all have the same kinds of tools. Important thing here is the username, the database username is going to be Postgres. Password is Postgres. So these are the credentials for the dev database. And we'll use a tool called PG Restore, which complements PG Dump dash D for the name of the database and name of the database I'm using in development is camp campsite underscore dev and then we've got to give it the location of the dump which is one directory up since that's where I SCP'd it to campsite dot dump and there's a problem here we don't have that database yet so we could do a create DB uh, directly with Postgres, but as I said, we want to have the right roles and everything set up. Most frameworks have a way to do this really easily in 
uh, in Elixir land, you just do mix ecto.create, and there's also a migrate and a setup, but we're just going to create the database for now. And then we will restore the database as we just tried to do. And you can see, looks like maybe it's restored. ix s mix phoenix.server to start up the site. And let's see what we've got. I'll just refresh this. And oh no, insufficient privilege, permission denied for table users. What happened here? Well, what happened is the database we dumped from production has different credentials. Obviously, I'm not running username, Postgres, password, Postgres in production. So what we really want to do is we want to import the database without those uh, without those credentials and roles uh, when we do our store. So what we'll do is we will drop our database and then we will recreate it. And then we'll see if maybe there are some flags we can add to this to make it work. And I wouldn't be doing this part of the video if there weren't. So what we can do is we can see, we still need dash D before the name of the database. We can add a flag here, no owner, and that will do the import without any ownership information whatsoever. And that will also not work because we need the owner to be Postgres. Fortunately, we can do that with role equals Postgres. And we'll try our import again. We have three warnings here, but none of them are an issue. We'll restart our server and now we have all of the production data locally. So this is a pretty common task I've gone through a lot of times. And uh, I think, you know, obviously you don't want to do all your dev work with the production data, but it is very useful to be able to pull it down, do some analysis on it, and, you know, even make sure that your, your next feature isn't going to break on production data. Hope you found this useful. I'll see you next time.